underway then, and it's uh, wide down the leg side. Perhaps just some early nerves there from Zisha Mazar. So he'll reload and we'll go again. Another thing Brian was keen to emphasize when I spoke to him was was the this really exciting core of youngsters that Udi have, and it's a, it's a real up-and-coming team, and they've backed youth, and that's something that certainly excites them. Hint of early shape there as Azar finds his mark, swings one back into Craig Wallace's pads, and they scamper through for the first run of the day. I like by. Lions just chatting there to Captain Brian Clark. Don't know if he's seen something earlier. He's got a little pointer here for Callum Garden. There's a slip and a goalie waiting. <laughs> Big shout. Oh, turn down. There's that in swing that we talked about, Ronan. Yeah, seems to have brought the ball back in. Obviously, the first ball drifted down the leg side, and then the next one. Uh, Craig Wallace obviously hit the pads through the square leg, so possibly that one drifting down the leg side as well. It looks like Calm Garden's batting on leg as well, so unless he's got a big stride forward and across, you, you're doing well to get someone out LB from that angle. Yeah, exactly. And another big shout, and this time given, Zisha Nazar strikes in the first over, and Huddingston have the early breakthrough they were looking for. Calm Garden gone, LBW without scoring, and they're one down early. Yeah, just again, that kind of early shape, bringing the ball back into the right-hander and the umpire's finger goes up and Addington have the, the dream start that they were hoping for. It's a beautiful setup, really. You, can, you know what he's going to try to do with that early ball, target those pads, target those stumps, but it's, it's much more difficult to do anything about it when it's on the money. It's going to be Jack O'Neill at number three for fourths, who's come into this game with a nice bit of form. There's a real high-scoring game in the Eastern Prem a couple of weeks ago, the last one to be unaffected by the rain, where Forfshire went down to, to Grange at uh, Rayburn Place, but O'Neill scored a really fantastic 100 in that game. Yeah, this was the partnership as well. Craig Wallace also got 100 that day, um, so both these two batters at the crease are, are in good form coming into this, so they'll be looking to kind of kick on from where they were a fortnight ago. Just a bit full on that occasion, punched back to the bowler, and there's no run. That's the first runs of the day for Jack O'Neill as he just works one off his pads out to the man at deep square leg. And he chops through for a single. More fans arriving, Ronan. Missed an early one, though. Yeah, I don't know if they've maybe been in the, in the pub beforehand and missed the early wicket. Again, full looking for that shape and just patted into the leg side by Craig Wallace. And that's the end of the first over. A productive one for Uddingston. They've struck early, removing Callum Garden, and it is three for one at the end of the first over.
It's going to be one of the Wilmot brothers to open up from the other end. It's going to be Tom Wilmot, who uh, sort of is one of this this members of this young core of this Uddingston side, and he he should sort of defied his years in the semi-final, removing removing. Uh, Sorry, just disappeared there for a second. Bowled an absolute beauty in the semi-final against Grange in his first spell, and he'll be looking to do the same again here with a new ball. It's Jack O'Neill on strike. And again, just a loosener there from Tom Wilmot down the leg side and signalled wide. It's Chris Greaves that he removed in that semi-final with an absolute peach. Bold neck and crop through the gate. They'll be targeting those stumps again here with a bit of shape on offer. again from Wilmot and worked, to, worked away down to third man just opening the face there by Jack O'Neill and they come through for a single. That's a good length. Just dragged his length back there, Ronan, and a good lead from Craig Wallace. Yeah, I think pretty much every delivery so far has been been really full. That was the first one that kind of hit more of a, a kind of hard length and just left alone by Wallace. Tries a catch there from the Uddingston fielders, just sliced away by Craig Wallace, but lands well short of the man down at third. Asking questions though, Ronan? Yeah, definitely, kind of, we'll see both the run just over of came down to third man off the bat, yet to see anything kind of in front of square, yeah, but I'm sure that'll, that'll come. Jack O'Neill gets on that front foot and drives gorgeously through the covers for four. It's the first boundary of the day, Ronan. That's a pretty good shot to mark. Yeah, that's the, the shot you kind of dream of before on the morning of the game. If you're going through your, your pre-match kind of ritual, that's the one you won't, can't ask for anything better than that glorious shot through the covers. Big swing and a miss outside the off stump there from Jack O'Neill. Off offered a bit of width through his hands. No contact, though. No feel in the game in the cordon. Yeah, got a, a slip and a gully from this end as well, so pretty much the, the same field looking to try and find one of the men in there. Some sharp running, just punch to mid on, and they come through for a quick single. And that's the end of Tom Wilmot's first eight runs coming from it, but stuff to keep the bowlers encouraged. And Porfisher at the end of the second over find themselves 11 for one.
Well, again, from Ziyashan Azar looking to swing the ball back in as he did productively in that first over, picking up the wicket at Callum Garden. This one not quite finding that shape, and it's just worked to point by Jack O'Neill for no run. Again, finds the middle of Jack O'Neill's bat. Just punched out to Moogle at mid-off. And again, no run, but he'll be encouraged by that. Jack O'Neill getting on the front foot, finding the middle of the bat. Yeah, we'll see that uh, single at the end of the last over, just punched to, to mid-on and this one to mid-off. So, yeah, playing some, some nice drives there with doors. That's a good length. Brian Clark applauds from behind the stumps. It's just that one honing in on the pads, not quite allowing him to drive on that occasion. Solid in defence from Jack O'Neill, but that's good bowling from Zisha Nazar, asking questions, making the batsman play. Sabu's and ours from that cordon as another dot gets played into the leg side. Building a little bit of pressure here, Ronan. Yeah, just five dots in the over so far. We're looking to, to see it out with another and try and, as you said, build that bit early pressure here. And there it is, first maiden of the afternoon. Zishin is our lovely bowling right on the money. At the end of the third over, it's still Forfisher 11 for one. Wallace has a little dance down at Tom Wilmot. Big swing and a miss, looking to go over the top, and it's straight through to Brian Clark. That's encouraging for the Odie opening bowler. Risk-reward stuff for the opening back there, Ronan, looking to score, but taking a chance. Yeah, absolutely, and Craig Wallace, you know, when he was in a Scotland church, showed a lot of intent, and when he was at the crease, and it looked to be kind of the, the same kind of thing there. Left alone on that occasion and signalled wide. again throws those hands it's over the offside one bounce four there's that intent again Ronan yeah exactly was looking to show a bit of aggression now in this over maybe trying to get after the youngster and put, put a bit of pressure back on him so be interested to see how young Tor Wilmot responds yeah, it's been a good battle so far both sort of going at each other let's just see how the rest of this over unfolds goes again that's a lovely shot using his feet dancing down 
Doesn't bother to run for those. That's four all the way off the middle of Craig Wallace's bat. Just seen a replay here, Ronan. This is pretty sweet. Yeah, it looks to be kind of what he tried to do first ball as well, but got a hold of it that time. Tom Wilmot drags his length back there. Solid in defence this time, Craig Wallace. Tom Wilmot just showing a little bit of aggression there in his follow through. Left alone by Craig Wallace. He's choosing his shots carefully here early on, choosing which balls to go after, which to leave alone or defend. Yeah, I think a little hint of a way swing away from the bat is uh, perhaps why that wide was called early and over just swung a little bit too much and a wee bit too wide and how Wallace has been scoring through the offside, just getting that little hint of a way shape early on. Again in the air over the top on the offside from Craig Wallace. He looks to take on Tom Wilmot. This one just skewed away slightly, runs down to third man and they come through for a second. Yeah, they're going after Tom Wilmot a bit here early on. 19 from his first two overs, but he's been very much in the game and they'll feel encouraged that sort of these shots will bring chances, you'd have thought. Yeah, it's been three really good boundaries through the, the offside from both Wallace and O'Neill, but Although Wilmot, despite being hit for those boundaries, he still beat the bat a few times as well, so everyone's in the game. is out to continue and this one's drived through the covers and they're going to come through for a quick second here it's good running but again jack o'neill really keen to get on that front foot and drive yeah he's looking good through the the offside so far just looking at his numbers from the eastern premier league he's first weed and run scorer in that competition and um, i think he has 496 runs to his name in his 13 innings so yeah showing why he's here as they're they're overseas Just a bit short from Zish Nazar and looks to nip away off the pitch that time. Bit of seam movement. Beats the batter Jack O'Neill and through to Brian Clark. <laughs> Full again. Targeting those stumps. That one's just towed out to mid off <laughs> oh, just straying down the leg side a little bit into the pads of Jack O'Neill and they'll come through for a leg by
You do wonder just from the evidence we've seen so far if um, obviously they're looking to, with that stock ball, swing it back in. But the one that seemed to cause Jack O'Neill a bit of bother was that one that nipped away. You wonder if that might be the surprise ball. Yeah, maybe a little extra a variation from Azar seemed to have a little bit extra bounce on it as well. Another one that angles in, it's just patted into the leg side by Craig Wallace. That's the end of the over, five gone, fourth shirt, 25 for one. Oh, it's that caught down the leg side, big appeal. Oh, nothing given. Jack O'Neill unmoved. It's a great take from Brian Clark there, diving away to his left. He thought he was in the game there. Didn't quite sound right, Ronan. I don't know what you think, maybe pad? Yeah, it must have clipped something on the way through because the umpire didn't signal a leg side wide, so it must have just came off the, off the pad. a little bit short from Tom Wilmot and hammered away through point by Jack O'Neill. Looks in good touch here. Yeah, I'll see O'Neill so far scored majority of his runs through the drive, that one just off the back foot, so front foot, back foot, really good start from him. Drifts down the leg side. Bit of an overcorrection there from young Tom Wilmot. Short again, and Jack O'Neill climbs in. It's another fall through the offside for him. He's ticking along nicely. Yeah, almost a carbon copy of that ball, two balls previously, as you said earlier. Looks in good touch here. an absolute beauty from Tom Wilmot, top of off. Jack O'Neill has to go, he looks down at the pitch almost in disbelief. Oddingston strike, and Forfisher are two down inside the power play. Yeah, what a response after getting hit for those two early boundaries, that was almost the, the perfect delivery you want as a, as a seam bowler. Look at this. Angling in, nip away, top of off. That's just about unplayable, I think, Ronan. Yeah, it's a, a dream delivery from, from young Wilmot. And he got a Scotland international in the semi-final, picked up Chris Greaves. There's another one coming out to the middle here. He's the star man for fourth for sure, Michael Leesk. Yeah, I think as pointed out um, earlier on the route to the final, fourth for sure have relied on other players who've got them through so far. They're kind of star-studded, top-order players. 
haven't quite found their best form in this competition, that we're hoping today's the day as uh, Scotland's Michael Lewis comes to the crease. It's a big wicket as well, you sense Jack O'Neill looked an imperious touch. Yeah, after that 100 against Grange a couple of weeks ago, he started really positively there, but that delivery from Wilmot and he's back in the pavilion. We spoke as well, like Craig Wallace got after Tom Wilmot a bit, Jack O'Neill a couple of boundaries there, but you felt he was in the game, he was he was beating the bat on occasion, a little bit of shape and it just showed there that if you get the ball in the right areas, there's stuff in it for the bowlers out there. Again, he's really he's really charging through the crease now. Just defended out into the offside by Michael Lees. Again, just punched into the offside by Michael East, and they scamper through for a quick single, and Vorfischer's number four gets off the mark. It's the end of the sixth, Vorfischer find themselves 35 for two. Tom Wilmot picking up his first with that absolute beauty to pick up Jack O'Neill. You'd have thought, Ronan, maybe just Forf's looking to get to the end of the power play now after the loss of those two wickets, just try to consolidate. I think so, yeah. I think, obviously, these are their two main batters so they'll be looking to kind of bat for a long period and put on a, a bigger partnership don't think they want to be any more than two down after the first ten Shanazar full again. He's punched into the offside by Michael East. A good bit of fielding down there. There's Imran Mughal there at mid off, getting down well away to his left, stuffing a couple of runs. Some good running here from Leask and Wallace. They're straight to the fielder, but they come through for a fairly comfortable single in the end. shot from Michael East. Another good bit of work away to his left by Imran Mughal. That was flying away to the boundary. Keeps him down to two. As always in games like this, Ronan could come down to a good bit of fielding, or just a good fielding display, stopping 10, 20 runs here and there. Yeah, those kind of small margins in these games are always important. And uh, both teams have done that well so far. Forfarshire with some nice positive running and I think they've been good in the field so far as well. <laughs> so 
Well, Bold just dragged his length back a little bit there, Zish Nazar. Michael Isk shows it the respect it deserves, just defending into the leg side. Just squared him up a little bit on that occasion, Zisha Nazar. Bat not quite coming through straight there from Michael Leesk. Just worked off his hip for a single there. And that'll finish Zishan Azar's fourth over, who continues to be really economical. Just going at a tick over two runs and over, and at the end of the seventh, fourth should find themselves 40 for two. Tom Wilmot just strays onto the pads of Michael Leesk and he doesn't miss out, whipped away through mid-wicket for four. Yeah, a great shot from Leesk there, just, as you said, goes onto his pads and takes full advantage of it and he looks to get underway with his first boundary. That's a good follow-up from Tom Wilmot. Back on the money. again from Tom Wilmot and that's a lovely shot from Michael he's through mid on they just come up just short of the boundary good bit of work down there sliding stop but they come back for three from Tom Wilmot, just guided to backward point there by Craig Wallace. Just that away shape again, just a bit too much, and signal wide by the umpire. A nice bit of carry through to Brian Clark, though, took that one pretty high. Nice wee bit extra bounce as well for Wilmot, so still plenty in the wicket for the Boers. Left 
Big swing and a miss from Michael. He says that extra carry again, Ronan. Just popping off, 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 off. Just, just short of a good length. Just carrying through well to Brian Clark. Tom Wilmot, he's gone for a few runs, but he'll feel firmly in the game here. It's the end of the eighth over. Forfisher 49 for two. Cries of catch from the cordon. Just flies away between slip and gully, down to third man. Ishan has been excellent here with the new ball. It's just a little bit like side from Zisha Nazar on that occasion, and Craig Wallace just tucks one off his hip down to backward square leg. of an appeal behind the stumps for Michael Isk. Just hit the pitch there. Ball outside off stump. short flashed away over the top by Michael East won't go for four I'll come back for two There's something in this pitch Ronan yeah there is a constantly asking questions although Forfers are still going at a, at a run a ball but Addington will be feeling in the game both sides will be pretty happy with the, the start they've made in the first nine overs John Tambo, John Tambo. 
sort of as the as the pavilion fills up and the crowd builds here continues to have people coming in. It's just the smell of the barbecue wafting across to us. Be nice, eh? Can someone will bring a burger across. No, I wouldn't mind one, yeah. through the covers by Craig Wallace but just a punch doesn't beat the diving fielder at mid-off Driven powerfully by Michael Leesk. Gets through the infield. Might run away for four. Holding just inside the boundary rope. They come back for three. It's more good running. Big appeal down the leg side, huge appeal. And turned down, nothing given. Brian Clark, that's the second time he's dived away to his left. Taking one down the leg side, it's a brilliant bit of glove work, but the umpire not convinced that that's come off the bat, Ronan. It's a big shout. Yeah, again, no wide signal down the leg side, so it'll be interesting to have a look at the replay, see what that clipped on the way through. Walked across his stumps there, Craig Wallace, and like you said, it's it's hit something on the way through replays. Not conclusive, but they were convinced behind the stumps. Oh. Banged in by Tom Wilmot and Craig Wallace up to the challenge. Pulls away convincingly for four behind square. And that'll end the first power play. Fourth shirt are uh, 62 for two. He said an over or so ago, Ronan, that both sides would be fairly happy with this start. A couple of early breakthroughs for Uddingston. And fourth should go in along nicely over a runner ball. Yeah, I think so. I think 10 overs in, relatively evenly poised. I think big stage of the game coming up and see who can you take charge in the next 10, 15 overs or so. Just thinking, it looks like Zishan Azar is going to continue here, but do you, how long do you think it'll be till Brian Clark turns to Ross Lyons? He said the middle overs, he's going to be key and... He's the premier bowler for Uddingston. He's impressed throughout this tournament. You'd, you'd have thought they'd be getting into, into the attack pretty soon. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see if we notice anyone starting to, to warm up now that we're out of the first power play and the, the field can be spread a little bit.
just angled across Michael East there by Zish Nazar. He throws his hands, can't get anywhere near it, and it goes through to Brian Clark. Still firmly in the game here, the bowlers. Well timed by Michael East, but straight to the fielder. Just since he's still still yet to quite find his groove, but even so, he's got 17 from 20 balls, and I think Sun will want him before he can really get into gear. Ball there. Ross Lyons just teasing the patrons here, throwing it up. <laughs> Hammered by Michael, he's just wider the man at mid on. It skips away for four. See, Shanazar thought he was in there. As it is, the fourth sure in Scotland man continues to tick along nicely. Yeah, a nice bit of aggression from Lee going down the ground. I think that might be the, the first boundary that's came off of Zars Bowen so far. He's been keeping it tight so far. Punch down the ground again, but not quite timed on this occasion. So it's just a one. That's the end of the 11th over. Five runs from it, 67 for two. Look like we are going to get a change of bowling at the far end. Tom Wilmot's opening burst's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be Abdul Sabri from the far end. Ronan, what can we expect here? Yeah, just some more uh, right arm seam as well. I think um, obviously Addington made didn't get off to the start they would have wanted in the league. I think um, Abdul Sabri was working away in Dubai, so now that he's back in the team now, um, things have kicked on for them a bit as well. So he's a good addition for them to have, and yeah, some more some more right arm seam from the far end. Just a bit of a loosener there from Sabri down the leg side. Some follow up after the wide. Perfect Yorker. Least does well to dig it out.
Been good here. Good first start for Abdul Sabri. Brought into the attack. Backing up Zishan Azar from the other end, keeping it tight. He's just looking to make something happen there, walking at, at the bowler. Just got slightly caught by that ball back of a length. Just flicks it down towards deep fine leg, long leg, but landed well short. alone outside the off stump. That's given a wide. The bowler not best pleased about that. But extra delivery to work with now. And just straying a little bit here, Abdul Sabri. The third wide of the over. Brian Clark did well there again, away to his left. really good running again Ooh, maybe a little bit tighter than I first thought Big Wallace just dropped him one into the leg side and is determined to pick up two there Michael Isk I think would have just about got home that's 12 gone it's 73 for two it's way to our left there for sure boys up on the balcony just bringing a taste of Dundee to, to Glasgow there with their, their fourth sure flag representing Roman yeah, as I said, though, we brought a good good support along with them, and same again today, and they've got the flag on the balcony representing. Another wide, just a touch of indiscipline cre crept in here the last few overs from Uddingston. Zishan Azar's ball beautifully in this spell, just looking for a bit too much there. It was too far across Michael Leesk. And that's a beauty to follow up. Perfect length, just nipping away from Michael Leask, his shapes to cut, and it's through him, through to Brian Clark. It's encouraging stuff from the Eddingston bowlers. Both sure going along nicely, but there's still stuff in this pitch for the bowlers. And my 
Police throws his hands a little bit of wit. That's scampering away towards the boundary. Oh, and he can't quite claw it in. Kalisk so dangerous. He's ticking along, just under a runner ball. Offered a little bit of width there, throws the hands, picks up another boundary. Yeah, just beats the, the dive on the boundary from Basil Jawad as Wiesk moves on to 27 now. He's looking in, in good touch so far without really getting into, you know, his kind of full stride. So I think he's maybe got another couple of gears to go through. Skewed in the air, and Leesk sets off, chance. Oh, misses. That was gone with a direct hit. Ross Lyons has his hands on his head at cover. He knows that's a big moment in this game. It's not quite timed there from Michael Leesk. Skewing one in the air in the offside. And it's a really good bit of fielding from Joad, swooping away to his left, as we see here. Yeah, he was well gone. Just wide of Ross Lyons in short there. Probably deserves a second wicket, Zishan Azar, the way he's bowled. Yeah, he's been really economical, kept it tight, and created chances, have we seen in this over already? in the air just short of the fielder at mid off <laughs> start to think it might be Michael Leesk's day everything's going for his and Forfisher's way at the moment yeah those couple of chances have just landed short kind of teaching as our attack in the splice of the bat and the ball goes in the air but just landing short of the fielders on each occasion The end of the 13th over, and it's exactly run a, a runner ball for Forfisher, six and over. Uh, 78 for two. Even as we move quite a way away from the first power play now, just ticking through the overs, there's still this ball's still doing a bit, and uh, the Odigson ball is still extracting movement and bounce from this pitch. It's not easy to bat out there. See the, the drinks flowing in the clubhouse. Having a merry old time up there. Oh, big leading edge. And gone. Taken diving forward at mid off. Craig Wallace looks down at the pitch. He's just threw the shot a tad early, and I didn't have their third. There's a bit of pressure building in that previous over, Ronan. A few chances not quite going to hand, but this one does. Yeah, I think I think will feel like they maybe deserve that one, especially after the last over. Both batters struggling to time the ball really, and it's grabbed up mid off. I think it's that Ramzan there that's took the catch, and it's 78 for three. You said when those two came together. That was the big partnership for Forfisher. I think it's have broken it there.
Craig Wallace clap back into the pavilion. He goes for 22. It's replaced in the middle by Lyle Roberts. Just as Robertson does a bit of garden as he comes to the crease, just joined the club over the winter from Falkland in his first season at Forfs, uh, more than useful bat, and also bowls some off spin as well. So he'll be looking to be involved as the, the afternoon goes on. from Abdul Sabri. Uh, Robertson gets in behind it, just pats his first ball into the leg side and there's no run. Since this is a really big spell in the game now, middle overs, Ross Lyon still 10 overs of him, Ross Lyon still 10 overs of him to come. Hofshire can't really afford too many more dismissals here. Yeah, I'll see the run rate's been fine, but just three down, as we said, this will be an important phase of the game. Attempt to there from Abdul Sabri. Dangling the carrot outside off while Robertson having none of it. and just short of first slip. Played that quite well in the end, Lyle Robertson, soft hands, that's why it went to ground. It's Mohamed Awais there at first slip, he thought he was in the game. Target in the stumps, dug out by Lyra Robertson. It's the wicket, and then four dots to follow up. It's been excellent stuff here from Abdul Sabri. the bat so, <laughs> throw back to the ashes there that Johnny Bersto run out it's Brian Clark throws down the stumps while Robertson back in his ground not going for a wonder so wicket maiden though from Abdul Sabri 14 gone 78 for three Zishan Azar to continue from the pavilion end. Was well, Michael Lee some problems in the previous over he bowled? Looking to continue that here. So I think continue to build pressure. We change from the wicket keeper as well, Brian Clark coming up to the stumps now as well, see how that changes things too. Yeah, he 
wonder if perhaps Lee was batting out of his ground to negate any movement that's still there. Clark just not allowing him to do that anymore. Just dug in a bit short, and Michael Lee tucks it into the leg side. They come back for two. Fourths have run well so far. the pads there from Zishan Azar come through for a leg by spectator away to my left just tried to throw his crisp packet into the bin and missed from about half a yard don't think he'd get a game out there Ronan so maybe that, that wind and the, the swing in the air that's causing the trouble even with the crisp packets again from Zishan Azar to Lyle Robertson just driven into the offside no run say as well if you are if you are in the vicinity of the ground patrons continue to come in crowd continues to build nicely I'd encourage you to come down some excellent cricket on show here at Clydesdale and gone, caught in the gully. Zishan Azar has two and Forfshire are four down in the 15th. Just back of a length, Lyle Robertson fending at it. He has to go without scoring and Forfshire at 82 for four. You can't really argue as well for Zishan Azar, that's probably richly deserved for the spell he's bowled. They've kept him on, finishes his eighth over with his second wicket and as I said, it's probably very well deserved. seeing the replay here just hands away from the body and it's a really sharp catch in the gully there Captain strides the middle then for four for sure, Scott Cameron. They could do with the captain's innings here, Ronan. Yeah, just struggle to build a, a really kind of solid partnership. As we've said along the whole innings, the run rate's been fine, but they've just not really kicked on and built a partnership that's been really meaningful, so they'll be aiming to do that now. Has to be said as well, like it doesn't look the easiest pitch to bat on. It's not quite coming on perfectly. There's a few sticking, a few still nipping around even after 15 overs. and. It's like tricky as it is, maybe just rein the scoring back a bit and consolidate for a few overs. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they, they go about it. Obviously, one set man at the crease and one man looking to, to get going. So, as we've said, as soon as the power play ended, this would be a, a key phase of the game. And I think fourths have went from 62 for two to 82 for four. So that's 20 for two in the five overs since the power play ended. Better arithmetic than me. Here we go, fellas, here we go. 
Pulled away in the air, but safe. He's not going to run away for four. Come back for two. That's probably only the second real shorter delivery we've seen in the game. Maybe not the best option, at least in his T20 international career. He strikes at over 200 against the short ball, and he's never been dismissed it. So maybe go to, to something else other than that as he pulls that away. No man in the deep is pretty comfortable in the, the comeback for a second. As you say, that's a better length to Michael Leask. Get it up there, get him driving. again from Abdul Sabri. Michael East just drops on his haunch, is disappointed in himself, missing out there. And only punch it back to the bowler. Straight out of the middle of the bat from Michael East, but straight to the fielder at mid on. It's another dot from Abdul Sabri. After a few wides in his first over, has come back really well. He's kept things tight at the other end while Zishan Azar bowled that brilliant opening spell from the pavilion end. He's absolutely nails it straight out the screws, but straight to the fielder this time at mid off. Just sense he's itching to get one away here. He's going at a runner ball, but back to 31 from 41 deliveries now. Looks to feel back on ball. Short again from Abdul Sabri and the fielder that was down at long legs being moved wide. That would have gone straight to where he was. Skips away for four runs. He spoke about his strength against the short ball run and they've just fed that strength there. Yeah, he makes no mistake when the ball comes down to, to that kind of area and yeah, punishes it and puts it away for four to get probably a, a well needed boundary just to settle for for sure a wee bit after Radingston have had a pretty good spell the last few overs. Just say as well, apologies to viewers for the drop in the feed in the, the last few overs or so but we're back live with you now I think in the time you were away missed a couple of wickets but, uh, just to recap four for sure by themselves 89 for four with Michael Leask and the captain Scott Cameron at the crease
Izzy Shemazar to continue, and as he has been all day, bang on the money. Scott Cameron, that's his first ball that the captain's faced, and in behind it solidly. Strays on that occasion, Tisha Mazar. I saw this earlier in the game. Brian Clark coming up to the stumps, not letting the batsman get at Zishan Azar. Just looked to keep a little bit low. Scott Cameron jabbing the bat down on it. Shout for LBW there, but it's definitely bat first. And it's more good running from fourth. So they've been excellent in that capacity today. They scamper back for two. Really good gloves from Brian Clark. Wide outside the off stump from Zisha Mazar. Takes it cleanly. Cardinal's in there. Hunter's walking in front of the batsman's eye line across the sight screen. He's kept beautifully, hasn't he, here, Brian Clark? Yeah, he's answered every question that's been thrown at him. There's been a, a few that have strayed down the leg side and he's dived to his left to get it and standing up now and he looks pretty comfortable doing that as well. the end of the 17th over, Forfisher 94 for four. See Shanazar's bowled nine overs straight through, two for 31, and you'd have thought that he's gonna just bowl straight through here. Yeah, you can't really see any reason to take him off, even in that over, asking a couple of questions of the batters. He's been so accurate throughout his first nine over so far, so his last six balls he'll be looking to do exactly the same.
Sun's come out here at Titwood Ronan. Just had to put a bit of sun cream on, could feel myself burning up a bit there. Tropical in Glasgow, eh? Yeah, one minute it's cloudy and then the sun comes out, but when it does come out, it's, it's pretty warm, so hopefully we can stay out for the remainder of the afternoon. Oh, Edson gone. It's another absolute beauty from Abdul Sabri. And Scott Cameron has to go. Perfect length, nipping away and well taken away to his right by Brian Clark. It's another pretty unplayable delivery, that Ronan. Yeah, exactly. Just not quite at that length to drive or cut, just dragging the batter forward. And Brian Clark, we spoke about his wicket keeping in the last over. He makes no mistake behind the stumps and for for sure are five down. Just nips away, just leaves Scott Cameron a touch. Nuddingston, absolutely jubilant out there now. Forfisher 95 for five. Aman Bailwell, the new man for fourths, placing his captain, Scott Cameron. Comes in with his side in need of a score. Michael Leask still out there on 35. Wickets have fallen at regular intervals so far in this game. The pitch offering a fair amount to the bowlers. And helpful overheads as well. Livingston still have the tournament's leading wicket taker, Ross Lyons, in reserve. Left alone by Bailwell. Just punched to the man, uh, short extra cover, Ross Lyons. Full again, Bowell looks to go through the covers but can only help it back to Abdul Sabri. 
Another really good over from him from the far end. Now bowled four overs, two for 14. And the wicket in that over, of course. 18 gone, four for 95 for five. Still 32 overs remaining, Ronan. Feel that they need a partnership just to need to bat the overs, if nothing else. Yeah, exactly. There's still such a long way to go. Plenty overs to bat. We could stay at the crease. And I think one thing you could probably say about Forfarshire as well is they do bat deep, so they'll back themselves to go all the way. Just on that card there, Lewis James carded at number 10 on that sheet there, but he's obviously been a key part of their team in this tournament with his, his knocks to get them here. Yeah, there's been a few games where they've, they've found themselves eight, nine down chasing though this is the first time they batted first in the tournament but like you say the lower order got the job done <laughs> well bowled again from Zishan Azar he's into his 10th over now he's going to bowl straight through he's been absolutely immaculate on the money again there Michael East just defending into the offside Straying a little bit there, Zishan Azar. Just pushing it across, the new man. <laughs> Spoken up, Brian Clark's keeping abilities, and I don't, I don't think he could have done too much with that. Stood up to the stumps. Just down the leg side from Zishan Azar. That's the first really bad ball he's bowled. Goes away for four wides. He's claiming that it's hit something on the way through, but the umpire's saying it's beaten everything. And it skips away. Yeah, quite close to the batter's hit, but don't think it touched anything on the, through, on the way through, and that brings up Forfarshire's 100 as well. Shot dug out by Bellwell. They take two down to deep third. the outside edge of the bat, it's really well bowled from Zishan Azar, straight between slip and gully. And that concludes his 10 over spell. It's bowled absolutely fantastically. Two for 41 from his 10 overs. Could have perhaps deserved one or two more, but he set the tone for Uddingston. And 19 overs gone, Forfish should find themselves 105 for five. looking across to the east as well of course not just the uh, HF group 
men's Scottish Cup final today. In Perth, we've got the Beyond Boundaries women's Scottish T20 Cup that's ongoing. In the first semi-final, Grange women were bowled out for 28 by West of Scotland. And West of Scotland knocked them off. No wickets down for a 10-wicket win. Nama Sheikh, the star with the ball for West, taking four for seven from her four overs. And in the second semi-final, it's currently ongoing. So we just see Man Bailwal leave the first ball of Abdul Sabri's latest over. The second semi-final over in Perth. Watsonians women are chasing 113 to win against Stuart Melville's women. Pippa Kelly scored 49 from 38 balls for Stu Mel in that first 20 overs. Watson's 94 for five after 15.3 overs in reply. Short and wide from Abdul Sabri. And cut away to that shorter boundary towards the hockey pitches by Amon Bailwell. That's his first boundary and took advantage of a slightly wayward delivery there. Aerial Ronan, but never really in any danger. No, it's well wide of the fielder and just capitalising on that extra width, and that'll look to get Bear well going in his innings. It's just come off Amon Balawa's hip. Brian Clark scampers after it. They're coming back for two here. Yeah. It's been a feature of Forfish's innings find themselves in a bit of bother five down but they've run really really well between the wickets picking up extra runs here and there yeah they've matched the wind balls are going towards mid off and mid on pushing singles and getting through without any real bother and then also turning ones into two so it's been a real positive there there then so far A bit fuller on that occasion, low full toss from Abdul Sabri. It's punched back to the bowler. Michael East had to get his bat down quickly. Ball hit the stumps, might have been a question asked. Oh, target in the pads, big shout, not given. Little inside edge, maybe Ronan. Yeah, maybe too noisy. He's also maybe a wee bit high as well from where it hit him. Don't know if he's standing outside his crease, but umpire remains unmoved. See the replay here. He might be right, just a little bit high. well bowled from Abdul Sabri still a bit on offer there for the bowlers bit of shape it's the end of the 20th over for sure 111 for five wonder who Addington are going to turn to now that See Shanazar spell finished. Looks like it could be Imran Mughal who also bowls some some right arm seamers. He'll be coming on from the pavilion end. Have you batted against Mughal, or obviously, or maybe not batted against him, but seen him operate this season? Uh, yeah, he queen bowled me. <laughs> Talk me through that one then, please, Ronan. Uh, just a standard day for me, just missing a straight one. Um, but no, we still managed to, to win on the day, so that was the, the main thing. But it was a challenge opening the bowling against him and Mo Because um, they're both really aggressive players, so that'll be something we'll see in the second innings. Depending on what Forfeiture will end on, might kind of dictate how aggressive they'll go early. But they're 
definitely both capable of hitting those early boundaries. It's a team game anyway, Ronan. Yeah, Wins exactly. the main thing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, chance, big mix up, must be. And gone. Michael East just came off his hip, thought he'd got past Brian Clark. Amon Barwell was halfway down and Lee sent him back. And he, he gave up the ghost, knew he was gone. Yeah, I don't think there was a run there. I think Michael East was right to send him back. The ball possibly didn't. Maybe Bailwell thought the ball had got beyond Clark, but it just stretched towards his left-hand side and remains composed and just almost rolls the back towards the bore and he picks up and knocks off the bails and Addings didn't have four pressure, six down. It's Nelson striking as well, 1-1-1. One, one, one. As you say, six down, only in the 21st over. There's still a long way to go in this game, but but he continued to strike at regular intervals. Wicket's tumbling around Michael Leesk. Brian Clark, like you say, showed really great awareness there just to make sure it got back to him, Ran Moogle, and, a, and a, an elaborate taking off of the bales there. Bit of flair. That's a lovely shot from Michael Leesk. Just cashing in, releasing a little bit of pressure. Two full there from Imran Mughal, and Leesk blasts it back down the ground for four. Yeah, just as you see the replay there, pretty much a half volley for Leesk and Hemix. No mistake, punching down the ground to relieve some shackles as we now see Midoff go back as well. It's wide down the leg side from Imran Mughal. Started well, his first two balls were right on the money. Just strayed slightly in the last couple. 
Shaping up really nicely now, Michael Leask. Just holding his shape there. Good ball from him on Moogle, which punches it to mid on. It's easy with those sort of deliveries to maybe fall over your front leg, but he did really well. Just hold his shape, plunge back down the ground. And again, timed really well out into the offside by Michael Leask, but there's a sweeper out there, so just one. Yeah, he continues to, to go about his work quite nicely. Lisek, I think, as these wickets have tumbled since then in the first power play, he's possibly been starved a little bit of strike and been stuck at the non-striker's end watching, so he'll be looking to kick on and capitalise here. alone by Lewis James. That's the first delivery he's faced. And that's the end of the 21st, 117 for six. And you just see him there just gesturing to Michael. He's got just that away shape. Still, uh, still moving around, 21 overs in. And these overheads continue to sort of sit over at Titwood. Still doing a bit. We've also spoken as well how there's so much time still to go in innings. For for sure, be hoping Lewis James is the man to to provide a bit of glue in this innings. He's done it already in the competition in that one wicket win over Heriots. He was the man that got them over the line with 35, not out from 98 balls. And then in the semi-final where they chased 150 against Clydesdale, they were seven down and he got nine out from 54 balls. So he's someone who can certainly spend a lot of time at the crease and look to kind of value his wicket and just bat with Michael Weiss because he'll probably continue to just go about his business in his usual aggressive manner. Spoke about how well Michael is keeping his shape. Just lost it a little bit there. Thick inside edge into the leg side. Takes him to 42. spoke about Lewis James batting time in, in the previous rounds, coming up as a real sort of cup specialist for fourths in this tournament. And they could do with him batting long again here, just supporting Michael Leask, building a partnership. He spoke earlier about how probably looking at 200 plus when you bat at Titwood. Still well short of it here, six down. A big inside edge from Lewis James. He's hit that between his own legs. But he survives, gets down to the non-strikers. Side edge, wonder if Sabri's maybe nipping the ball back. Another single into the leg side. Classic bit of baller's mind games there from Abdul Sabri. Big shout of catch as her leg side wide goes down there. 
umpire not confused by that. Oldest trick in the book, signals wide. Back of a length there from Abdul Sabri. Nice James just defends stoutly towards the bowler. Do you just feel like it's going to enter a bit of a holding pattern now this game? Just content to work singles, not really take any risks. Try get up towards something like a pass score. Yeah, I think the next target for force will just be get to drinks where they are with these two at the crease and, and take it from there. strays down the leg side. James digging out a full ball. And we're going to get overthrows here. Stopped well in the gully. Got a bit overexcited there. Tried to throw down the stumps. Lewis James comfortably back in his crease. As it diverts off the stumps, they come through for a quick single. into the leg side, well played. Just a single. Slightly elongated over there from Abdul Sabri, but that's the end of the 22nd. For sure, 125 for six. Sorry, mate. Special year for Clydesdale, of course, the 175th anniversary. It's really marking, marking that, that anniversary in style here. It's a really healthy crowd, really good turnout. People supporting cricket in Scotland and here in the West. It's really good to see. Yeah, absolutely. There's spotted plenty of members from various different clubs around the West, so it's good to see everyone coming together for, for an occasion like this. a gorgeous shot from Michael Leask. Imran Mughal just straying onto his pads, nonchalantly, dismissively almost, whips it away through mid-wicket for four. Yeah, that leg side is a real area of strength for Leask. Makes no mistake when the ball strays onto his pads there. Oh, big swing and a miss this time, though. Just that extra carry. We've seen that throughout the day. Just a bit of extra bounce off a length. Flies through, past the bat to Brian Clark. Flicked off his pads again, straight to the man at square leg, gone. That's the big wicket. Michael Lees goes for 48. We're talking about how that leg side area is a real area of strength for him, but it proves his downfall. And Forfisher, seven down now before drinks. 
129 for seven. Uddingston absolutely jubilant out there. They know how big a moment that is. Michael Leask, the main man, has to go for 48. Just see there, Ronan, just walked across his stumps, looking to access that leg side. Didn't quite get hold of it. And straight down the throat. Yeah, Tom Wilmot holds his nerve on the square leg boundary, as he said. Just shuffled across outside off to access his favoured area, but picks out the man. And Addingston couldn't have asked for a much better start here in the first half of the innings. I spoke to Scott Cameron in the week, and he's spoken about how in this competition, big names haven't quite fired. Least played have played really well there for his 48. But he goes now, and Scott was keen to sort of stress how, how this run's been built off some of their they're sort of lower profile players and they need, a, they need them to stand up here. Lewis James joined by Jack Hogarth in the middle. Can he stand up with the bat? Fourth seven down in the 23rd over and you just feel that they're short here. Yeah, definitely. We've still got to see, still yet to see any spin coming into the tack as well. So you've got 10 overs of Ross Wine still to come. So Addingston will be absolutely delighted with the position they've got themselves in here. Jack Hogarth beaten outside off stump first up. Still that away shape on offer from Imran Mughal. Lots of oohs and ahs from the cordon. They're well on top here at Inkston and they know it. Too much shape on that occasion. Brian Clark questioning whether that was a wide or not, but given. No, the old saying in cricket is don't judge a pitch till both sides have battered on it. And it is still doing a bit. That on ball this time from Jack Hogarth. Just squared up a little bit. He does well. Pats it into the offside. Another over, whistles by, fourth, 130 for seven at the end of the 23rd. Yeah, they're just still in search of that kind of key partnership, but it was these two against Clydesdale in the semi-final that got them over the line. Forfeiture found themselves 120 for seven, chasing 150, and it was this pair who put on an unbroken 30 partnership to get them over the line. So they'll be looking to dig in again here and get them towards the, the back end of the innings and see how much they can get up to. As we also see Ross Lyons now come into the attack, so our first bit of spin this afternoon. He sensed this is a key, a key moment in the game, really. Oddingston's main bowler, their main wicket taking threat, and he comes into the attack with the opposition seven down. Great platform for him to work with. Yeah, Abdul Sabri bowled a, a really good six over spell there, but I think this is a pretty attacking move from Brian Clark. A slip in, like you say, attacking field, keeping it tight. Asking the questions, keeping the fielders up. They want boundaries, they'll need to go over the top. Straight on the money, immediately from Ross Lines. Just a little fumble in the covers, lets them come through for a single. Yeah, as you said, with them looking to have to go over the top with this attacking field here, obviously allowed four men out at this stage of the game, but I think it's only deep cover that's on the fence at the moment. Just 
batted into the offside by Jack Hogar. I spoke to Brian Clark in the week. He said that in his eyes, Ross Lyons is still an international quality spinner. He's shown that in this competition, I suppose. Leading wicket taker. He's a serious threat with the ball. Little temperature outside off stump from Ross Lyons. Just brings the drive. Hogarth picks up one to that sweeper on the cover fence. Flatter a little bit quicker there from Ross Lyons. Dealt with well by Lewis James. Uh, on the money, Ross Lyons, as you'd expect, that's his first over done. Two from it, for sure. 132 for seven after 24. a good shot from Jack Hogarth getting on that front foot driving through the offside picks up two it's good that they're still looking to score run still got to accumulate pick up runs yeah I think even in this scenario we've got to show a bit of positivity or they might end up in a wee rut Fourth share balcony like that, looking to score, getting on that front foot. Nothing silly, just playing the ball on its merits. <laughs> Red Moogle just dragging his length back there, beats Jack Hogarth outside off stump. That's a gorgeous shot from Jack Hogarth. This one will run away for four. Lovely shot. Yeah, just as we see it again, not a terrible delivery at all. A touch of wind on offer and Hogarth gets in the back foot and punches it through the cover, just beats the dive. Flicked off his pads this time down to long leg. Work to do for Tom Wilmot. Gets around well. Just be a couple. Well kept out by Jack Hogarth. That's the end of the 25th over, and that'll be drinks here at Clydesdale.
players are back out here at Titwood. It's going to be Ross Lyons to continue from the far end. And as I said just before we saw that highlights package of the action so far, I'm delighted to be joined on commentary by fourth shore opener Craig Wallace. Defended well by Lewis James out into the offside. Craig, just give us a taste of what it's like out there. Looks pretty tough for batting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's a little bit two-pieced. Um, obviously, one side got a little bit wet on Friday, but it's not too bad of a kit, to be honest. You just need to keep fighting as hard as we can for as long as we can now and get a total on board. I just kept a little bit low from Ross Lyons. Hint of bat pad, but bat first, I think, there from Lewis James. Defending well here. Just as that highlights package was playing out, you're talking through some of the dismissals. And I think that, that ball from Tom Wilmot that got Jack O'Neill, that was probably the highlight so far. It's pretty unplayable. Yeah, that was a, that was a very good ball, unfortunately. So we were, me and Jack kind of got us back going as well. Had a nice little partnership going as well. It's unfortunate to produce a ball like that, but it's part of it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we just need to keep going here, obviously. LG just needs to just bat for as long as he can. Then. Bat for as long, long as he can, obviously. Just a long way to go. Yeah, that's it. I'm guessing just about batting the overs now. Yeah, we still need to stay positive. We kind of pride ourselves on a kind of positive band of cricket. Um, and we bat all the way down to 11, so we definitely won't be going into our shell. Um, it's just about working out what plan to go for and, and how we get those runs. Really good set from Ross Lyons. Lewis James plays out of Maiden. Just coming back to yourself, Craig, obviously talk about batting all the way down this side. It's been a real feature of this cut run. You've obviously been chasing this is the first time you've batted first, but the lower order have really stuck in for you and got you over the line. <laughs> yeah, that's probably fair. Um, yeah, probably a few games we've kind of been dominating and just had a bit of a collapse and then the lower order have brought us through. But as I say, we, we, we attack and we go because we know that we've got batters to come uh, and we've got full feet and then to battle all the step into here and get us on the score. Scott at the toss, uh, captain, so sort of said you don't set yourselves to target, but sort of with the game as it is, just seeing how many you can get to or have we got a number in mind? Yeah, just as many as we can get, really. Um, yeah, no number, we don't try not to put a ceiling on anything, really, and especially because we don't know. The way I bat and the way people bat through the middle, I could get off an absolute flyer, I might not. So it just depends on, depends on how they bowl and the wicket and conditions and everything. So yeah, just get as many as we can, bowl as well as we can, try and defend. It's a really good ball that from Imran Bugle. Just that sh still shaping away this ball in the 27th over now. Still that movement on offer. played from Jack Hogarth. He's been really impressive so far. Just shaping up nicely there, defending back down the ground. Solid in defence again there, Jack Kogar. <laughs> oh, edging through the cordon. Quite sure if that was a chance. Fofsch is running, which has been excellent throughout this innings. Sees him come back for two. It's a no ball as well from the ball there. 
So hopefully see a little bit of magic from Hogarth. Just overstepping there. So we're going to see the first free hit of the innings. Mind the windows. absolutely nailed that Jack Hogarth but could stop down low to his right from Ross Lyons in tight he thought that was four all the way off the middle of the bat well, that's 27 overs gone in the HF group men's Scottish Cup final fourth sure 146 for seven Unrivaled levels of in-house capabilities and service in everything we do. HF, a company well connected. It's going to be Ross Lyons to continue from the far end. Oh, and gone! an absolute beauty from Ross Lyons. A little bit of extra bounce and well held at slip. Jack Hogarth, who's batted really well so far, has to go. Fourth sure eight down here. Sorry to bring you in, Craig, but that was a pretty good ball. Yeah, I was almost about to say, I think how we play Ross here for this next 10, 15 overs is going to be crucial to getting us to a total that is, is going to be good enough. Um, but he's also obviously a very good bowler, so we're going to have to play well, but even Lewis Robinson coming out, we've got full faith in him playing well too, so hopefully we can dig in for another 10, 15 overs to see what happens. That's it, we've spoken about batting the overs. Um, for yourself, Craig, obviously opening the batting for Forfshire. Sure. You've got uh, other commitments coming up this week, head coach of the national women's side, of course, and there's there's a series of games being played here at Clydesdale. Does the, the national side prefer to go away for the, the World Cup qualifier? Yeah, a really important week for us, actually. We've had uh, a good training block since since Holland. Um, and they're just actually amazing just seeing and watch them play cricket. Cause I think they, they definitely lack the, the game time. Um, so from my point of view, I'm just looking forward to just sitting back and watching and seeing, seeing how they play and seeing, seeing what they've learned over this period since I've been involved and, and what they can do. There's a few new players coming into the group. Young Neymar Sheikh really impressed um, today in the in the T20 tournament over in Perth, she's taken four for seven as, as West's won the first semi final. She must be really exciting to work with a talent like that. Yeah, definitely. Name has been amazing since she came in. Um, learning loads as well. She's so. She's got an amazing attitude. Yeah. That's well bowled again from Ross Lines and gone. Two and two. Yeah, again, another good ball by Ross. Just. And go then hit him straight in the front pad. I think as soon as it hits you in the pad on that line, you know you're in trouble in the batter. Looked pretty out, didn't it? The only thing that was going to save Lewis Robinson then was a little inside edge. He trudges off, drags himself away in fourth for nine down now, 146 for nine. Still only in the 28th over. Yeah, I think we'll keep talking about the women if that's okay. If we go back to that and sort of going into the T20 qualifier, Craig's got a smile on his face. Yes, and as he just says, that is out on replay. Um, but yeah, this this qualifier, set yourself any targets going into that. Obviously, making a World Cup would be incredible. Yeah, so it's a it's a pre qualifier, so we need to um, the top two go through into like another World Cup qualifier, which I think will be in Dubai early next year. So obviously, just main target to, to get through first and foremost. Um, but again, I just wanted to see us play uh, play a brand of cricket that we really want to play. And we talk, obviously, we train a lot and talk a lot. And now it's time to play some games next week, and then moving into Spain to really try and play this play brand that we that we want to play is probably the most important thing for me. And then hopefully that will bring bring wins. And it must be quite cool for you as a coach to you've got obviously these these experienced players who play week in week out on pro deals like the Bryce sisters, obviously Abtal Maksud, and um, Hannah Rainey's away with the hundreds. We just see Ross Lyons come in on his hat trick just a bit short and he's I think he's annoyed with himself there Ross he's patted that back towards the bowler 
but yeah, for you as a coach, you've got all these experienced players, and then it must be cool for you to see this new sort of wave of talent come into the squad and be integrated. Yeah, a hundred percent. The um, the the professionals, especially, um, they're amazing. Obviously, really good players, but the whole group's just really good in terms of giving information over and trying to learn all the time. So the young ones coming through are really, really good, but they've got also got a lot to learn and they understand that. So the more they can be around, like the Bryce says, after Hannah, especially like being a hundred first time, she's going to learn so much. And I mean, I you know, I'm looking forward to speaking speaking to her about what she's learned. And I know Nema and all the young ones will too. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's a really it's a really good mix to be honest at the moment and. Got, got a long way to go, but I think everyone's really keen to go on that journey, so that's good. And just a question for me, uh, Catherine Fraser, she's still coming back from her injury? Yeah, Catherine Fraser's unfortunately still injured. Um, just She's still back in the gym now, working working hard, so hopefully get her back bowling soon. But, but yeah, no no chance for this tournament. And Coral and Montgomery as well, still, still injured. She's got a high collaboration um, in June, I think. Just shows the depth of young talent, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Bryce Olchen doing well there, just to pat out the rest of that over from from Ross Lyons. And yeah, I wish you all the best this week, Craig, and hope you can go defend this in the field. Good, best of luck. Thanks for joining us. No worries. Thank you very much. Craig's gone back to the dressing room there. Obviously, if you are down near Clydesdale this week, come down and support the women's national side. Well, a big shout for LBW. Shake her head from the umpire. Hands on heads from Brian Clark and the slip cord. And that was close. There's James just playing around his front pad. Umpire signaling it's sliding down. into the pads for this time, definitely sliding down. Scamper through for a leg by. Rejoined on commentary by Ronan Alexander. And Ronan, while you were gone, a couple, a couple of pieces of really good bowling from Ross Lyons to go bang, bang, and put four for sure in a real hole. Yeah, well, she spoke about him coming on when they were seven down, and he's got the eighth and ninth wickets for his team as well, two for two or three overs, so great start from him, and four for sure will have a bit of work to do here. Outside off stump, Bryce Olchen pra practices his leave. We spoke earlier when the barbecue fired up, Ronan, about maybe someone bringing us a burger across and must have been listening. You've had yours, I've still got mine to come. Take a single into the leg side. And they're going to come back for two here. All good running. Applauded roundly from the fourth balcony there. Yeah, how was that burger for you, Ronan? Yeah, it seemed like the perfect timing for that break there when you got Craig Wallace on to speak. The burgers came round, so yeah, ten out of ten from me. Little half-hearted appeal from behind the stumps there, but nothing doing. Side. Just a single, more applause from the fourth Shaw balcony. That's the 150 up for the Dundee outfit. 
Went in 28 and a point five overs to reach that milestone. Nine down. Yeah, and that appears to be the over over bowled. There's only five balls by my reckon in there. So ball shot. That'll be Ross Lyons to continue. Is that pad first? Big shout. Given. Definitely a combination of bat and pad there. It's just what where the impact was. That was pad first. It was pretty close. Ross Lyons has a wry grin on his face there. Lines sinks to his knees, falls to the floor there in desperation. Again, he thought that was pad first. Again, the umpire says nothing doing. He's bowled beautifully though, hasn't he, Ross Lines? Two for two, 3.3 overs. He's a quality operator. A little bit wide, a little bit shorter on that occasion. Bryce Olchen to lay one out to the sweeper on the cover fence for one. Lewis James goes back, just beaten on the outside edge. A beautiful delivery from Ross Lyons. Slower, bit of flight. Lewis James does well to wait for it. Should play it out to mid off. One from the over. That's 30 gone. 151 for nine. Running there's an old adage in 50 over cricket that you tend to double what you're on at 30 overs. I think that's fairly unlikely here. Yeah, I think it's a, a big ask. Unrivaled levels of in-house capabilities and service in everything we do. HF, a company well connected. Now have a change of bowling from the pavilion end. It's Mohamed Oais coming into the attack. What can we expect here, Ronan? Yeah, ball some off breaks, so another different variation in the Uddingston attack. So possibly spin from both ends here to try and get that last wicket. Right on the money to start. Tempt her outside off, left well alone. It's 
Blackmore really good running from Forfisher there. Be very easy in this situation to go into their shells a bit. They're still pushing those singles, running well. James just punching back to the ball there. It's a good first set for Mohamed Oase, really tight, just a one from it. 152 for nine at the end of the 31st. More and more spectators coming in to watch here as the game goes on. It's really good to see. I know um, I spoke to Scott Cameron in the week, he spoke about how Quite a few of the Forfisher side that won the competition in 1994 would be down here to watch today. And it's nice to see some of the older generation supporting this this current current iteration. Scott was saying as well that there's a bit of banter between that side and the current one as Ross Lyons comes in. There's a few of the few dads of the current side that played in 94 and there was lots of talk about how they'd won the Scottish Cup and this current side hadn't obviously until they lifted the trophy last season. Scott was saying that they can retain the cup this year, take the bragging rights, say they've got two to their dad's one. Floated up from Ross Lyons. Ross Olchen, just a little, little frustrated punch of the bat. He played that well, kept it along the floor to mid on. Floated up again from Ross Lyons. Really clever, changed the flight and variation. Ronan as a fellow left arm tweaker, you can appreciate that. Yeah, just going to mix up his pace a bit here, searching for that final wicket. Flighting some up and then darting a couple in. There it is. That's that attempt to getting it above the eye line. bowling from Ross Lyons. It's been absolutely immaculate. Bowled five overs now, two for three. Four for sure after 32, still 152 for nine. <laughs> so we just see the partnerships there. There's that 44 put on by Craig Wallace and Michael Leesk in the middle and 32 for the second wicket partnership between again Wallace and Jack O'Neill, but out with that, it's, sort of, it's been quite a few starts to partnerships and just failed to kick on wickets at regular intervals. Stopped by Mohamed Oais, punch down the ground. Goes away for four, much needed boundary for fourths. So Lewis James held his shape really well there, didn't try to overhit. And beat the man coming round from long on.
little variation there from Oasis. A leggy thrown in there amongst the offies. And again, just changing things up as they search for this last wicket. to offies and skewed to backward point and gone. Lewis James just slicing that one. And that's the final wicket. Fourth shot all out here at Titwood for 156. Nuddingston need 157 to win their fourth Scottish Cup. straight away, thick inside edge down to long leg. Imran Moogle and Uddingston get underway, far from convincing. Side edge this time from Mo Ace. Really good start this from Amon Bailwell. Right on the money. Just watch out for Mohamed Oase if he, if he gets going. It's a really destructive opening bat. to be joined on commentary as we just watch Amon Balwell come in. And a good sharp run. Oh, a little bit of yes, no. Imran Mugu gets home. It's a really good piece of fielding there. Delighted to be joined on commentary here by the chair of cricket at Clydesdale Cricket Club, Colin Mitchell. Colin, a pretty special year for the club, 175th anniversary. Just talk to me about what the club's been doing this year to mark that. So uh, the, the club obviously primarily is uh, proud to be still on the go, uh, providing the local community with you know, team sport, cricket and hockey for 175 years. Um, oh, real aggression shown there from Imran Mughal, but and again, it's just a thick inside edge down to long leg. Sorry, Colin, carry on. Yeah, no problem. So we have various events uh, celebrating aspects of the club, social, play, development. Our main event uh, comes in September where we have our anniversary marquee dinner on the ground where we expect to have you know, great players, captains, supporters of the past all attending to, to celebrate keeping the institution going for 175 years. aggression there this time from Mohamed Oase throwing his hands at a wider one that concludes the first over of this chase Huddingston three for none yeah it must be really cool for you as chair here to see such a good it's a really good turnout and people putting money into the club and really celebrating cricket here in Scotland and in the West yeah so on, on various levels so the club has had a, a relationship with Cricket Scotland or Scottish Cricket Union formerly in historically you know, in the past big internationals have hosted the the scottish cup in the past delighted to have the game brought back here for for this season equally pleased that the sun has finally come out given the the weather that that ran ran through into this uh, this cup final but yeah it's a, it's a busy day you know it must be upwards of 350 400 people i think around the venue um and it shows that the interest level in club cricket domestic cricket uh, you know, still alive and kicking, and great that you guys are, are broadcasting it to a wider audience as well. Yeah, it's been really good fun. And as we just look at that, it's going to be opening up from the far end. Yeah, 
It's going to be Bryce Alchin. Yeah, for for sure need to make some inroads here. I think that they Absolutely. they know that you know trying to defend this is is not going to be the way forward. I think they'll they'll bowl with wickets in mind to try and put some pressure on Eddingston and and you know put them behind the rate. It's nice and full looking for that movement that on offer with the new ball. It's punched out into the covers. Yeah, but you spoke about the weather there. Just a word for your ground staff who prepared this this venue for today, despite all the, the, the weather that's been around for the last month or so. Yeah, so we, we're fortunate. We have a full-time groundsman in uh, Martin McAllister. Um, but putting on games of this uh, stature and size, I'll just move, wait a moment. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Going over the top. Oh, and it's just plugged in the outfield, but just trickles over the boundary rope four runs spoke about the attacking intent of this pair Imran Mughal showing that there going over the top it's the first boundary of this chase well, I think if they bowl in Imran's half he'll, he'll take it on front or back foot that's the only way he knows how to play really but yeah Martin's done a great job to get the, the ground turned around from you know, a deluge of Friday night um, great volunteer support from members who realise that you know to put these games on we, we all have to do our bit but the, you know, the place looks in fine fettle Full again and over the top again. It's another imperious shot from Imran Mughal, but it just holds off in this outfield. They come back for two. Yeah, you spoke there, Colin. If it's in his half, it's going to go. We saw yeah. it there. Yeah, Imran played uh, for a couple of years for us in our 2021 league winning team. Um, and very destructive T20 cricketer for us as well. And this is just how he, he goes about his game. If it's, if it's there, he's going to take the game to this 4 4 attack. Bit of a mix-up, and gone. It's a little slip, I think, there from Imran Mughal. He thinks he was home, but he's been given out. Just dropped behind square on the offside. A really sharp bit of work. The bail's whipped off, and he has to go. Spoke about four for needing early wickets, and they've got one here. The dangerous Imran Mughal goes for eight, and Uddingston a nine for one. Just wait for a replay there, but it seemed like there was a little bit... I don't think there was a run on offer there. It just looked like he slipped as he turned to get back. Looks like he's just short of his ground. It's Amon Bailwell in the gully, who swooped, picked up, got the throw in quickly. And a good bit of keeping to take off the bails. Yeah, I think adrenaline's got the better of him around there. I think back-to-back -back fours, heightened intent. You know, maybe just a little bit over eager, eager to try and rotate the strike, but uh, I'm not sure there was one there. It's going to be Aman Ramzan at number three for Oddingston. He's the top run scorer in this year's competition. 100 against Stenhouse Muir in round one. 93 against Fergusley in the quarter-final. I need him to stand up again here. I think having seen another replay, if the, if the uh, video official here might be seeing a few replays of that, it's very tight. Yeah, Imran certainly didn't look happy, did he? And uh, I think in those runouts, the one guy that knows for sure is the, the batsman. The batter knows when his bats cross the line, didn't look happy. Just a front foot no ball there from Bryce Olchin, which done well to sort of reel Ludington back in after the aggression at the start of this over, but this will be a free hit. Slower ball, and it's absolutely smeared back down the ground. Not sure if it'll go all the way to the fence, no. Oh, and another mix up. Just gets back. Just a single. Absolute chaos in the middle here. As you said, just emotions running high, adrenaline pumping, and just need to settle down. Yeah, I just think they need to take a breath. You know, don't don't go over 
chasing this game. Um, you know, they're comfortably up with the rate. They don't need, there's no scoreboard pressure particularly. Uh, the only way they get themselves in, in a little bit of trouble here is by you know, losing wickets. So needless runouts is not going to be the way forward for Addington. The end of the second over, I think it's an 11 for one, and Colin just again 175th anniversary for this club. Yeah, so the the, the club um, at the moment you would say in terms of our, our cricket, our numbers are great. Um, you know, we're probably going through a bit of transitional phase with our first team young players coming through, but historically, you know, we won the the Scottish Cup seven times, so this is a you know as a major major trophy in our you know, historic reference points. Um, we were very dominant through the 70s and 80s and last won it in 2016. Um, uh, side captain by Majid Hack and influential professional, the late Condalanga, played uh, a steering hand in, in that final. Yeah, much missed Condalanga. Oh, that's well bowled, big shout. Given and they were up there, maybe just pitched outside leg. Aman Ramsen playing around his front pad. Just wait for a replay. That's where he was. Yeah. They need to coach, but that's not like it. Looks a good shout. Maybe doing too much. Yeah, I think maybe maybe beating leg, but but a really good shout. Forward in defence, Salmon Ramsan batting out of his crease there by the looks of things just to negate that movement. Yeah, I think that the, the rain that we had through Friday into Saturday has probably taken a little bit of the, the pace out the pitch and I'm sure that's also why he's come down. Um, just to you know, be, be near the ball a little bit earlier, negate any movement, you know, give himself a chance. Just dragged his limp back a little bit there, Aman Barwell, and Aman Ramzan gets in behind it and defends well. Again, big shout, plays around his front pad again. Again, not given. Looked a little bit like side again. Umpire unmoved. We saw this in the fourth sure innings that when the fielding side get on top. There's lots of noise out there. It's not an easy time to bat with this new ball. Yeah, and again, just looks to be doing a little bit too much. Banged in, a little bit shorter, and when Ramzan goes back, cuts into the offside, but no run. And that's the end of the third over at Inkston, 11 for one. Big thank you to Colin Mitchell, chair of cricket here at Clydesdale, joining me on commentary, and we'll welcome back Ronan Alexander. Yep, thanks very much for that. Enjoy the rest of your day. hesitation in the running oh and Mohammed Oais was well gone if that had have hit just need to calm down here at Inkston it's absolute chaos out there in the middle 
It's a real feature of the fourth sure innings was how well they ran between the wickets. It's really, really, really unsure here for Oddington to start. And all they really wanted was a nice, calm, sure opening period, and they're not getting it at the moment. Floated up from Bryce Holchin, inviting the drive. Aman Ramzan just just doesn't quite go through with this shot. It's well done. Didn't quite throw his hands. Swinging outside off, fighting Ramzan to have a go, and he does. Just plays within himself out to cover. Feature of the fourth sure innings where Brian Clark bring himself up to the stumps for Oddie and Callum Garden's done it here for for four Fisher, just keeping Alman Ramsen in his crease, building that pressure. the end of the fourth over, Dinkston 12 for one. Unrivaled levels of in-house capabilities and service in everything we do. HF, a company well connected. That's a really good shot from Mohamed Oase. Beautiful timing through the covers. It's a gorgeous shot. Just a real nerve settler for Oddington. And a real touch of class. doesn't even have to throw the hand at that one, just almost leans on it and it goes through the covers all the way to the boundary. Oh, timed again. This one might not quite go. Yeah, just runs away. Two beautiful shots through the offside from Mohamed Oais. He's a quality operator. He's shown it there. Again, doesn't have to hit the weather off, it just times it to perfection and it goes through for back-to-back -back boundaries. Oh, it goes again, aerial. Wider the man at backward point, it won't be another four, but they'll come back for two. Spoke to Brian Clark in the week and he said to watch out for Mohamed Oase. He said he's times the ball better than anyone he's ever seen. This is one of the most unique batters in the country, and I think we've just seen that there, just the real fluidity through the offside. This time he does throw his hands a little bit away from his body, but safe. This 
one just flicks the thigh pad and beats Callum Garden. Come back for two leg buys. And four balls of this Aman Barwell over. It's been 10 runs off the bat, 12 in total. Drags his length back there, Armand Barwell, and Mohamed Oyes just jams a bat down on it. Good delivery to finish the over. Five gone, Huddingston 24 for one. Yeah, Ronan, we spoke about Mohamed Oais and how much of a danger man he is. Two absolutely wonderful shots in that over. Yeah, already striking at runner ball with a couple of glorious boundaries through the covers. Needs to be settled in already after never start, not necessarily with the bat, but just running between the wickets. That over has certainly got Addingston underway, and it's pretty much as you were, I think, for for sure. We're 25 for one at this stage, so pretty even so far. Gloves from Callum Garden there, stood up. Tempter from Bryce Olchin, outside off stump, left well alone by Amon Ramzan. Shot from Aman Ramzan. Parried in the covers, allows him to come through for a single. Brings Mohamed Oais back on to strike. Money from Alchin. Always oh, just defends into the offside. Oh, flashes at that one. It's a thick edge through the cordon, down to third for four. He's going to keep going, isn't he, Mohamed Oise? Yeah, again, just throwing his hands at that one. I think him and Imran Mughal both like pace on the ball. Mughal already departed, but a tactic we've seen a lot of teams in the West, including ourselves at Presswick, try to do is open with a spinner. And when we played four for sure in the T20s, they rotate their bowlers quite a lot. So I wonder when we'll possibly see spin come into the attack. Just said Mohamed Oase is going to keep throwing his hands, keep going at the ball. If it's there, if he feels it's there to hit, just 
plays and misses at that one outside off stump. Six gone, Huddingston 29 for one. Keith Sheridan on the screen there, 100 caps for Scotland, of course. Good to see him here watching, watching this showpiece event. Oh, another big shout for LBW, and given this time, Alan Ramzan thinks that's missing leg, but he has to go. And fourth shall have a second in the power play. Huddingston 29 for two. Again, Ronan, it's that early shape with the new ball, isn't it, doing the damage? Yeah, just that left arm angle, the same as we've seen Jishan Ashar doing the first innings. It's Baywall this time, and Uddingston are two down early doors. There have been a few appeals for LB from this end in the innings so far. That time, the umpire replies in the affirmative. Ramzan, the top scorer in this tournament, has to go for two. It's a similar story to Forfisher in the power play. A couple of early losses. It brings young Ben Wilmot to the crease. Been away playing for Scotland under 17s recently. It's part of this core of really talented young players coming through at Huddingston. Joins Mohamed Oase in the middle. Absolute peach to get first up. Full straight, and Ben Wilmot does well to jam a bat down on it. Hammond Bowell right on the money here. Hold really well. As we saw in that first innings. A little bit too paced this pitch. It's movement on offer. It's not easy out there. Solidly in behind it this time, Ben Wilmot. one just angled across the umpire says that's done too much and signals wide Throws down the stumps and Wilmot looks to be in his ground. Yeah, he did well to just play down the line of that one, Ronan, and not chase the ball. Yeah, just getting a sight of early doors, just watches that one go past the outside edge of his bat. Oh, another 
mix up. It's really unsure out there in the middle, running between the wickets for Oddingston. Forfish are really tight in the field. But they survive crucially, and at the end of the seventh over, Oddingston 30 for two. It's a good shot from Mahoud Oase. But just for one, out to the sweeper on the cover boundary. Bryce Olchin will have his first look at Ben Wilmot this afternoon. from Bryce Olchin, targeting those stumps. And Wilmot plays it out into the offside. Still yet to get off the mark. Swinging, just defended back down the pitch. Chases this one, Ben Wilmot. That shape just keeps it going away from him through to Callum Garden. Three dots in a row now. This game really in the balance. an absolute beauty it's a really good length Wilmot drawn into playing and it beats him on the outside edge again quality stuff from Bryce Olchin here into the offside by Ben Wilmot for no run. It's the end of the eighth over, Huddingston 31 for two. Ronan Forfshire got a real variety of seam options at their disposal, and they'll keep these two going or maybe look to an early change. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they were to make a change early. When we played them in the T20s, they mixed up their bowlers quite regularly, just not allowing a batter to settle against one bowler, constantly changing things up. So they've definitely got an array of different options at their disposal. With spin as well, the leg spin of Hogarth, off breaks of Wiesk as well. Oh, it is Barwell to continue though from this pavilion end. 
It's first one angled across Mohamed Oase, who just leaves it alone. This one keeps low, big appeal and gone. Mohamed Oase, feel unlucky that ball. Really didn't get off at all. I think it got him on the back pad, and that looked fairly adjacent from here. Oddingston 31 for three. Just waiting for a replay. The only thing saving Mohamed Oase there was if it pitched outside. It's a good shout. I think when the batsman goes like that, head down, he knows. That's a big, big wicket for Forfisher. The dangerous Mohamed Oase goes for 17. They find themselves at Inkston, three down in the foul play. They also just looking at how Forfisher have done in this tournament on the route to the final bone out Renfrew for 93, Watertonians 157, Harriet's 158 and Clydesdale 149. These kind of totals have been what Forfisher have been bowling teams out for, so they're looking for the same again this afternoon. And the highest score that a team's managed against this really formidable bowling attack is 158. It's all Huddingston need, but feels a long way away at the moment. You see that wicket again. Yeah, that looks to pitch in line. Just rushes through. That's out. Brings Fazal Jawad to the crease. This side needing to stand up and be counted here. Cannot afford. Another wicket in the next few overs. Ben Wilmot, of course, yet to get off the mark. So two new batters at the crease. This ball swinging. Oh, that's right on the money first up. And Barwell's ball beautifully here. See, Shanazar did it earlier for Oddingston. Now and Barwell with that left arm angle. Targeting the stumps, targeting the pads. Jawad does well to keep that out. <laughs> Bit of work there from Jack O'Neill in the covers. Just keeping this pressure on. Officer ran between the wickets really well earlier. It's those small margins, those fine margins that can be crucial in tight games. And they've been really tight in the field early on here. Oh, just skewed, not timed at all. Skewed over the top. Joad gets off the mark with an unconvincing two over the top of backward point. And again, just look to keep a little bit low. Good calling, good decisive running on this occasion. And Joad will keep the strike at the end of the ninth. Oddingston a 34 for three. Really in the game, hasn't he, Amon Balwell? Running out Imran Mughal and then two LBWs swinging back in, targeting those pads. Oh, 
with a really good opening spell here. He put his side back in this contest. Swinging from Bryce Olchin, asking questions. Batted back to the bowler by Joad. Smashed through the covers. Fazal Joad. There's a sweeper out there, so it'll just be one. Brings Ben Wilmot back on to strike. Slower that one from the looks of Mulchin. Callum Garden, quick hands, whips off the bales. Just reminding Ben Wilmot that he's there. He's faced ten, ten balls now, still yet to score. The main thing is that he's still there. does get off the mark a nice looking cover cover drive that beats the man at short extra bit shorter there from Olchin and Azal Jawad just I think he might have just come off his glove there. Just tucks it into the leg side for one. Oh no, given his leg bias, maybe it's thigh pad. shuffle across his stumps and a really nice looking cover drive that picks out the man at short extra. That's 10 overs gone. That's the end of the first power play. Odingston 37 for 3 as they target 157 to win their fourth Scottish Cup. Unrivaled levels of in-house capabilities and service in everything we do. HF, a company well connected. That's a lovely shot from Faisal Jawad. Just a bit full from Amman. By a while, Jawad, I don't think he got it right out the middle of the bat, but very convincing back over the bowler's head for four. Just as we see that again, despite the end of the power play and the fielding restrictions have changed, both men still up in the circle and Jawad takes advantage. Oh, goes again, straight up. Is he going to get lucky? No. Yes! Gone. Yes! Huge roars of celebration from the big four Fisher contingent here at Titwood. Fazal Jawad, four and out. And fourth, some bang in this game. It's a big moment. Just since the only way that Uddingston were going to lose this game is if they're all out. 
Uh, just playing their way into a spot of ball here. Just that ball wasn't quite there to go after. Skews it straight up in the air. And Scott Cameron, the captain, takes good ground over his left shoulder and takes a safe catch. You can see from the celebrations here, they know that's a big moment. Just thought for a split second that might land safe. But Cameron anticipated really well where that ball was going to finish up. It's never easy coming over your shoulder, but he does well. Yeah, it's a good catch. The wind is blowing that way as well, so the ball could have easily got away from him and landed in that gap, but remains composed and takes the, takes the catch, and Uddingston are 41 for four. Brings Ross Lyons to the crease. Played an absolutely vital innings in that semi-final win over Grange. 60 odds, 70 odds. And at a good pace too. He bowled beautifully earlier on. His team need him with the bat here. By his own admission, he's maybe not the most consistent with bat in hand, Ross Lyons. But he's very capable when he gets going. They need someone to stay with Ben Wilmot now. Still in the 11th over, four wickets down. It was the story of Forfish's innings, losing wickets at regular intervals. And it's carried into the Oddington innings here. 157 looks a long way away at the moment. A rock solid first up, Ross Lyons. has a little flash outside off stump straight through to Callum Garden. Aman Balwal, what a performance he's having. The run out of Imran Mughal and then three wickets from this pavilion end. Oh, and he beats Ross Lyons again. That's a really, really nice delivery. Drawing him into playing, beating the edge through to Callum Garden. 11 gone, Buddingston 41 for four. Just a reminder as well, it's not just the HF Group Men's Scottish Cup final taking place today. Over in Perth, we've got the Beyond Boundaries Women's Scottish T20 Cup. And in the final between Watsonians and West of Scotland. Watsonians have been bowled out for 65. The name a shake again, the star for West, taking four for 11 from her four overs. And their chase just about to get underway. Good lead from Ben Wilmot. It's a good length. Swinging away, not tempted. It's a lot of pressure on a young man out there, but he's dealt with it really well so far, choosing when to leave, when to play nicely.
does well there as well. Just squared up slightly by Scott Cameron, who's brought himself into the attack from the far end. And international, of course. And Wilmot just going back there to a slightly shorter ball. Keeps it out. Strays a little bit there, the Forfisher captain. from Scott Cameron and Wilmot gets on the front foot punches it back to the bowler Short and pulled away. One bounce just bounced inside that boundary rope. Hart would have been in his mouth there a little bit, Ben Wilmot. There is a fielder down at long leg. Flew over his head. Deliberately played that upwards. It wasn't a top edge. Scott Cameron walks back to his mark, shaking his head. He thought he was in the game there. He's in full control of it a bit. Hogar just comes in from the boundary, maybe started 10 yards deep and just drops over his head. That'll set settle Wilmot down. Aaron just spotting the first 11 this year after making back-to-back -back tons for the seconds at the start of the summer. So we can they really kick on with in the first team now. That's a good lead. It's a really good follow-up from Scott Cameron. Good length outside off stump, but Ben Wilmot not drawn into playing. Like you said, promotion to the first team at club level, being away with Scotland youth teams. Looks a good player. Yeah, looks a good prospect. That was a nice pull shot, as I said. He was in full control of it. Got it out the middle of the bat and just beat the man at one leg. well there Ben Wilmot just punching it to Michael Leesk at mid on get the sense though as we see the end of the 12th over I think it's 46 for four and the fourth sure innings they were the sort of deliveries and the sort of shots that were bringing singles but they were just allowing themselves to tick over really pushed the Uddingston fielders and ran really well between the wickets just a dot ball there and it'll be Ross Lyons on strike Simon Barwell looks to continue from this pavilion. End. He's bowled a brilliant opening spell here, hasn't he? Bang on the money. Yeah, he's been incredibly accurate so far, and as you touched on there, we have been fully involved in all four wickets so far. A little bit of cat and mouse there between fielder at cover and Ben Wilmot Ben Wilmot asking him to have a shy and putting his bat down comfortably in time a little bit short that time from Bailwell and Ross Lyons guides it down 
to a man down there for a single. Gets him off the mark. Oh, it's a gun. Four for Balewell. Ben Wilmot has to go. Ahmad Balewell ripping through Uddingston here at Clydesdale. It's a great length, just angling across the youngster. Finds the outside edge, and it's a safe catch taken in the cordon. Again from Beowall, so accurate, just drags the batter forward and finds the man at slipping. Huddingston are five down. Fergus Clark, the new man. One youngster replacing another. Four for sure, all of a sudden, having been bowled out inside 32 overs for 156. And looking very much second favourites in this game. Suddenly, this brilliant opening spell from Aman Bailwell has put them bang on top. Very nicely timed up first up from Fergus Clark. But fourth is so good in the field so far. It's a really good bit of work from Jack Hogarth at mid on. Means there's no run. It's 47 for five at the end of the 13th. Also looks to be a change at the bone the, at the far end with Two left-handers at the crease. We're going to see the introduction of some off-spin with Wyle Robertson, who was previously involved with the Scotland under-19 setup. Really nice first stop. Spinner to spinner here. Of course, Ross Lyons brilliant with the ball earlier on. Oh, Robertson will be encouraged by that. Ross Lyons driving outside off stump. 
bringing that outside edge into play. the outside edge of Fergus Clark's back. Big grin on Lyle Robertson's face there. Driven aerially. Come through for a quick single. Good running. We saw it when Ross Lines was bowling earlier, Rowan and Ryan Clark keeping mid on and mid off up. Asking the batters to go over the top. It's the same again here from Scott Cameron. Ruslan's happy to defend for now, though. a really good first set from Lyle Robertson giving the batsman nothing to work with at the end of the 14th over Eddington of 49 for 5 needing 157 to win a feature as well of the fourth year innings with just that failure to build a really substantial partnership. Addingston again, They're just losing wickets at regular intervals. It's really hamstrung them so far. They need a partnership. Can it be this pair? Handsomely by Fergus Clark into the offside, but straight to the man in the covers. They all want to continue. Why not? <laughs> Absolutely beautifully so far. Continuing to just tempt the batters outside that off stump, finding that shape away from the left handers. Fergus Clark not biting. Driven nicely down the ground by Fergus Clark, but not quite timed, it'll just be one.
a little bit of confusion there as I think the umpires thought we'd finished that over, but Bellwell had one more in the set, so we're going to come back. Extra ball does the trick, does it? Oh no, not given. Just a little flicker of a noise as it went past the bat, but maybe Ross Lyons hit the floor. LOL grins, I think he knows that wasn't out. All day overs now though. Four for 23. It's a spell that looks like it's taking four for sure to back to back Scottish Cup wins. Livingston 50 for 5 in pursuit of 157. As Lyle Robertson continues. Really nice from Wild Robertson, landing it really nicely, giving it a bit of air. One just a little bit quicker, played back to the bowler by Fergus Clark. Oh, thick outside edge, and it gets past Jack Hogarth. A bit of spin there, just. Yeah, he just gestures, just a bit of spin off the surface. It allows the Odingston pair to come through for a single. Science thought about going there, I think. Content to just defend. Just the one from that over. Odingston 51 for five. Unrivaled levels of in-house capabilities and service in everything we do. HF, a company well connected. Fergus Clark into the shot, but played with soft hands. Land short of the man in the gully. Oh, inches away from the bowler, diving to his left in his follow through would have been an unbelievable catch. Just out of his reach. Ronan, you've talked about just how relentless he's been on that length. I mean, he's into his ninth over now, and I don't remember him bowling a bad ball here. Yeah, neither do I. It's been pretty much the same story as what we've seen in the first innings with the left arm seam attacking from this end and being naggingly accurate. Yeah. And right on cue. A big half volley outside off stump. And Fergus Clark tucks in. Lovely shot. Races away through the covers for four. Yeah, commentator's curse there from ourselves, I think, and Vegas Cork capitalizes with a, a lovely stroke through the offside. You just see here, just slightly overpitched. Fergus Clark gets a really good stride into the ball. 
beats the dive at cover. This time, though, just a slightly better length, slightly shorter. Draws Fergus Clark forward again, but this time beats the outside edge. Fully left alone this time by Fergus Clark. from Ross Lyons to the ball thuds into Fergus Clark's pads. Didn't go straight to the field of Lyle Robertson. You just sense that that's the sort of, sort of run that Forfisher were taking when it was on offer in the first innings. The score remains. It's all the fives, 55 for five at the end of the 17th. Lions as well, big stride in, smother any spin there. Is it out to Jack O'Neill on the cover boundary? Come through for a single. Oh, that's a beauty. Turn, bounce, far too good from Lyle Robertson. His pitch continues to offer assistance to the bowlers. Buller flighted, low full toss. Fergus Clark belts back at the bowler. Did we just see a replay of that previous delivery. Fergus Clark goes back looking to cut. Not quite the width there. He's lucky to get away with that one. Oh, and gone this time, yep. Yeah. Hell Robertson with a big celebration. There's turn there. Fergus Clark has a big drive outside off stump and nicks it through to Callum Garden, who takes a really smart catch. Forfisher well on top here. You beauties the cry from the middle, Ronan. The fans loved it. It was a pretty good delivery, eh? Yeah, Robertson's bowled really well so far. Just wonder though, last ball the over, do you need to go for a big push and drive at it? Just get out the over and keep keep ticking through, but well caught by Garda behind the stumps in Uddingston. We're in big trouble. And it's the captain, Brian Clark, coming to the middle now to join Ross Lyons. And boy, oh boy. Do Uddingston need their captain here? They're 56 for six. Still needing another 101 runs. To win the HF Group Men's Scottish Cup. That travelling band of Forfisher fans, well oiled in the pavilion. They're loving life at the moment. Uh, 
that's just shot along the floor from Aman Bale while continues to hit a really, really good length. And it beats Ross Lyons on its way through to Callum Garden. That's kept really low. A really good stop at point. Ross Lyons and Brian Clark scamper through for a single. It brings Clark on to strike for the first time. seen it done it he's won three scottish cups 2003 2010 and 2011. He knows what's required to get over the line in this competition they're a long way away still here Huddingston. oh and he's gone five for balewell what a spell He's gone straight through the Uddingston captain and he's bowled absolutely beautifully here. He's taking his side to victory. He ran out in Ramugal to start things off and then he's bowled 9.4 overs straight through from the pavilion end and he's now got remarkable figures of 5 for 28. Forfisher look well set for back-to-back -back Scottish Cup wins. And that's a beauty, isn't it, Ronan? Yeah, just perfect. Just angling across, nipping back into middle stump and goes through the Addington skipper and find himself seven down now. semi-final win over Grange. Huddingston were in a spot of bother batting first. And it was Ross Lyons who dragged them to a total. And I spoke to Brian Clark in the week. He described Ross Lyons as giving Grange the fright of their life. Started peppering the boundary with regularity. He just sent Tronan with 100 needed. And just three wickets left. Ross Lyons needs to put a bit of pressure back on on the fourth Sheffield field, is here. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see a bit of a counter-attack from this pair. Sabri yesterday scored 28 or 22 quite aggressively against Prestwick, so I wonder if they'll try to counter-attack a bit here and put a bit of pressure back on fourths. First job, seeing off the last two balls. Bailwell has been the destructor in chief so far. Oh, and there you go, first ball, Abdul Sabri. Hoiked away, not timed over the leg side. It's holding just inside the boundary rope. They come through. They take two or three there, just the two. A statement of intent, though, you'd say. So results in a field change. Oh, he goes again straight up. Is he going to get away with it? Jack Hogarth running back. Dropped. It's a really tough chance. Running back over your shoulder, never easy. Hogarth made up really good ground to get there. 
it would have been an absolutely stunning grab if he'd have taken it. it would have been Balewell's sixth wicket. Instead, he finishes with brilliant figures of 5 for 31 from 10 overs. He's bowled absolutely beautifully from the pavilion end, straight through, and he's put his side well on top here at Titwood. Yeah, he gets a warm round of applause from the Forfarshire faithful as he goes to take his fielding position, congratulated by his teammates as well. We spoke when Abdul Sakbri came to the middle about two deliveries ago. So we see that ball sliced up. Hogarth got there, just pops out the hands. But yeah, we spoke when he came to the middle about how Addington might look to counter. And I think his two balls so far have answered that. Big Mo over the leg side and another attempt at hoik that he just about gets away with. And with spin from the far end, that might keep going here. Mid off and mid on were both up before. See a field change here. Mid on drops. There's a cow corner stationed out there. He'd be hitting into the wind, Abdul Sabri, if he decided to take it on. It's a big hit out there to cow corner. Yeah, floated up by Lyle Robertson. Dug out well. With that wind, Ronan, you'd say that over mid off extra covers the go. Yeah, possibly. I do wonder if he's going to take on these fielders, though. Goes back. Just about keeps it out. When he does go straight up, this will be out. And gone. Abdul Sabri looks to go against the spin, and Lyle Robertson has two. As Abdul Sabri slices one to backward point, Oddingston now 60 for eight and staring down the barrel. Came out to bat, showed intent, but. With those fielders stationed back on the boundary, look to take them on, but catches the outside edge and the skipper makes no mistake at backward point, takes the catch. Sorry, it's not the skipper, it's an ouch in there that took the grab. So, Tom Wilmot. A lot of responsibility handed to the youngsters in this Uddingston team. They promote their youth, open the bowling earlier on. He's been a key part of their run to this final. Can he stand up with the bat? They need someone to stick with Ross Lyons. And you sense now he was probably going to go before Ross Lyons. He almost has to now. Said it of a few bowlers today, but I don't remember Lyle Robertson bowling a bad ball yet. And he's one delivery away from having bowled four overs. On the money again. Tom Wilmot just defends into the offside. It's 20 overs gone. Huddingston 60 for eight. Like you said at the top, Ronan, the run rate wasn't ever going to be an issue. 
just had to keep wickets in hand and they haven't managed it. And it looks like it's going to be one Scotland spinner versus another. Michael Weiss comes into attack to bowl at Ross Lyons. Yeah, spinning it away from the left hander. Not bad being able to call on an international spinner when the opposition are eight down. You just feel Ross Lyons has to have a go here. Also put the men back again with a long on a cow corner and a, a deep square. not that easy to tell which way the wind's coming from but I think if Ross Lyons looked to go towards the pavilion towards Cow Corner the wind would be helping so we might be in the firing line here from our commentary position Lyons doesn't quite get hold of it and has to get his skates on walks the first few paces there to yeah, really put the afterburners on to get home. Brings Tom Wilmot on to strike. You'd sense all he's trying to do here is get Lions back at the striker's end. bit short from Michael he's down the leg side just adjusting to the right hander after bowling at a lefty and it beats Callum Garden they come through for a run as well as the wide from Michael Leesk. So we just look in front of us here, Ronan. The Jack O'Neill, who was back on the boundary, put mid on now, inviting Ross Lyons to go over the top. Not tempted as of yet. It's a big full toss. Ross Lions can't get hold of. <laughs> they only take one run there. They thought they could have quite easily come back for a second. Especially with three balls still to go and over, you think he'd want to face as much of the strike as possible. It's just that variable bounce we've seen. It's been mostly from this end. And just kept a bit low, but well kept out by Tom Wilmot. Goes back across his stumps to get back on it and does. Yeah. 
thick outside edge. It's going to run away down towards third man. Can Tom Wilmot get back? Yes, he can. Take two. Means Ross Irons will be on strike. Seven from the over. Nuddingston a 67 for eight. Ross Lyon takes it on. Ross Lyons goes down the ground, hasn't quite timed it, and it holds up in the outfield. And they just take one. There's that intent, though. He sensed he had to go, just didn't quite get hold of it. Defended into the offside. Oh, is that an edge? Put down by Callum Garden. I'm not sure. There's a little yelp of exasperation from the bowler. Oh, leading edge and gone. Tom Wilmot cannot believe it, and Lyle Robertson has three. Just looking to turn it into the leg side, Tom Wilmot, it's a low full toss. Can only get a leading edge back to the bowler. And Lyle Robertson gets down low. It's a big, I think that's a 24 yarder, was it? Taking a leaf out of Mark Watt's book there. Yeah, just to be variation there just rushes the batter and gets his reward pulls out his trademark celebration and for for sure one wicket away he won the competition last year for for sure came into this game as favorites weren't at their best with the bat got to a score that gave them a chance they've come out here and bowled and fielded superbly surely now it is just a matter of time until they claim back-to-back -back Scottish Cups see Shanazar he was excellent with the new ball for Roddingston but he comes to the crease with his side in a whole world of trouble Here we go, two in a row. It's the chant from the Forfarshire travelling fans. And they sense their side are on the verge at Clydesdale. And there it is. Big appeal. Oh, not given. That just come off the arm of Zishan Azari. Had a big, big swing at Lyle Robertson there. Thought maybe that was glove to slip. The umpire says nothing doing. Kept out this time.
He sent Ross Lyons. He's not going to go down. He's not going to die wondering here. Edon stays up in the circle. And that will be Michael Lees to continue. length by Lees, just trying to avoid Bowen into Lyons' arc to, to free his arms. Bowen with a bit extra pace on the ball as well. Just darting them in. He sense one's going to go up above the eye line soon though. Fired in again, left alone by Ross Lyons. Slow a bit wider, Lyons leaves it alone. the over, Maiden from Michael Leesk not giving Ross Lyons anything to work with Noddingston 68 for 9 after 23 to continue on that far end. Can he finish it off here? Zishan Azar on strike. No foot movement, just defended back towards the bowler. Straight up, this will be it. There it is, Forfisher have won the Scottish Cup for the second successive year. It's the fourth in the club's history. And that big pocket of travelling fans are on the pitch. They've been superb with the ball, superb in the field. And Lyle Robertson finishes with figures of four wickets for five runs from 5.2 overs. He's bowled absolutely superbly. And Uddingston just couldn't, didn't quite have enough with the bat today. And a slightly tricky two-paced pitch here at Clydesdale. It's four for sure. Who are the HF Group Men's Scottish Cup winners for 2023. I now ask Hugh Fulton to present the trophy, the HF Men's Scottish Cup, to the winning captain.